Welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Do you ever feel like you're being watched? Well, you are. Don't worry, it's not ghosts. It's just spiders. Spiders are nearly everywhere in your house, in your backyard, all over the place. Today, we're going to do an experiment that you might not want to know the results to. By the end of this video, if you make it through it, we're going to show you a way that you can find plenty of spiders. Closer than maybe you think. Don't worry, no touching needs to be involved. For materials this time, the only thing that you actually need is a flashlight. But if you've got a smartphone that also has a camera on there with a flash that you can keep turned on, you can get some pretty cool results with that too. First though, we got to learn some of the science behind this in the field of optical anatomy. Let's learn about the eye. Here's a rough sketch of an eyeball, and I've put the tapetum lucidum as that pink layer behind the retina. I've also exaggerated its size so that we can see what's going on in this diagram. Those blue dots represent rods and cones, which actually will interact with light and observe it. So if light passes through the eye to the retina, some of it does get observed, but some of it will keep on going, and when it hits the tapetum lucidum, that layer will scatter that light all around, bouncing it all over the place. Well, some of that light bounces back through the retina and has a second chance to be observed. When rods and cones interact with it, then the eyeball sees the light. And animals that have this are able to then see better in low light conditions. Some of that light keeps on going and it passes back through the same way that it came in, winding up being reflected light. That gives animals that have this ability kind of an eye shine effect. Just like my pugs here, when I shine a light on their face, it kind of makes them look like goblins, which they are. As a general rule, and yes, a general rule does mean there's plenty of exceptions out there, Animals that operate mostly at night and in the dark tend to have more of an impressive tapetum lucidum effect. This is why a moth, which is primarily a nocturnal animal, tends to have a very nice eye shine effect, whereas a butterfly, which is active during the day, doesn't exhibit much of it. Before we get to the at-home indie labs part, though, let's learn about some animal eyeballs at one of my favorite places to go, Proust Pets in Lansing, Michigan. I've been going to Proust Pets in Lansing since my college days, early 2000s, so about the last 15 years. The store is incredible, such a wide variety there, and the animals are very well taken care of, that's really important to me too. The staff members are severely knowledgeable about everything in the store, that's awesome. Every single time I go there, I learn something new from the employees, and nobody there has taught me more than in the reptile room, Jason Bogut. How's it going, Rich? We're here with Nikki and Jason, and we are holding a species of tarantula. What species is this? This is the Brazilian black tarantula, scientifically known as Gramus de la Polcra. And Nikki, what's her name? Elvira. So we've got Elvira here. Uh, what can you tell us about this specific species? Well, she's uh, known for being one of the most docile, one of the most interactive species. They live in the rainforests, uh, but they find drier niches to live in the rainforest. In every ecosystem, there's micro habitats that are different than the overall. Does she know that she's crawling on a living animal right now? Does she know I'm alive? She does, actually. While her eyesight is very, very limited, she has a lot of other senses. She's tasting you through your toe pads. She's tasting me. <laughs> see her feeling around. She can feel your warmth. She knows that you're alive. How does she signal if I taste good or bad? Uh, well, as far as good, they're powerful, immediate predators. And if they decided you were food, you wouldn't have a chance to react. So I taste bad. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> or just not good enough. You don't okay. taste like food, Rich. That's a good thing. <laughs> All right. I, I always want to know this, too, because I haven't looked this up yet. What makes a tarantula a tarantula compared to just a spider? What's the difference there? One thing that stands out that a true spider can do is they can oppose their fangs to get a bite like this, which is much more powerful. Tarantulas, their fangs are more like a switchblade, like your uh, forefinger and middle finger folded under like that. For her to use her fangs, she brings them up and hammers them down. Like Dracula. Dracula. Yeah. Okay. Even though they get really huge, they're pretty docile. Like a big lap dog? Yeah. Big old puppy dog. So with Jason and Nikki's help, and of course the cooperation of Elvira, we decided to test out and see if we could get an eye shine effect. I took my smartphone, turned on the flash, and hit record. Then when we zoomed in, there it was. Two little eyes. One of them shining back white, and the other one had an interesting kind of rainbow effect due to refraction of light through her lens. So a Brazilian black tarantula, we do have some eye shine. And that made us prompt to want to try to test out some other spiders. The salmon pink bird eater tarantula did the same thing. We got two eye shine effects right there. So it seems like it works fine with spiders, 
I don't know if it works with every spider, but at least these two tarantulas we tested out. So what about other arthropods? Here's a ghost mantis, and she tries to mimic a dead leaf in the wind when she moves. But once we got her to hold it a little bit still, we could see definitely her compound eyes did allow for some eye shine effect. There's that tape to lucidum. So let's try some other eyeballs. Here's a crested gecko, and we didn't observe anything, but also the pupil's such a narrow slit it might be hard to get an effect. Chinese water dragon? Yeah, that's a no. Thought maybe reptiles couldn't do it, but then we tested out the corn snake, and yes, there was a positive eye shine result. So how about salamanders? Axolotl? Axolotl? I don't know. But positive eye shine effect. Sorry about mispronouncing your name. Well, thank you for, for letting me stop by and uh, experiment with your animals and your, your darlings. Anytime, it's a lot of fun. It's what we do for a living. We love sharing with people. Cool. Thanks. All right, time for your experiment. Here's our hypothesis. There's spiders all around you, especially outside and in dark corners. If you shine a flashlight at eye level, the outgoing light is going to reflect off of the spider's tapetum lucidum and alert you to their location. This effect can even work at a really good distance, provided you're shining that light directly by your line of sight. And this definitely works better at night or someplace in the dark. But you're probably too scared to do it in the dark. Now, if you got a smartphone where you can turn on the camera light the whole time while you're using the camera, you might want to use that for this because you can get some really cool effects and you can record them at the same time. But I promise you, the only thing that you do need to make this work is a flashlight. Just got to make sure that you are holding it in your line of sight. Now with that being said, I'm going to use this overhead minor type of LED headlamp because my mom bought it for me. I know she'll be excited if I use it in the video. And I'm going to go ahead and say this now, just in case one of us doesn't make it back. If you enjoy doing this lab, if you've learned something, go ahead and give that thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more indie labs in the future. And if you try this experiment at home, I want to hear about your results. So go give it a shot. Make sure to come back and tell us your results in the comments below. All right, let's go find some spiders. See what we can find. It's getting colder out. As it goes from uh, summer to autumn, it starts getting colder out. Spiders like to be kind of near the house to get some warmth. Whoa, see that little glimmer right there? That's probably one right there see on a pretty good distance away. Let's zoom in, get a little closer. Oh yeah. Awesome. Pretty sure that's a wolf spider. Awesome. Something neat about the spiders is that because their eyes are mostly exposed and almost spherical, it doesn't really matter which angle you do this at. That's awesome. Let's keep going. kind of helps when you're hunting to go side to side and you might see that little flash or that twinkle. Let's see what's in the garage. There eh, should be plenty of spiders in here. Ooh. Paparazzi! Yeah, there's that twinkle. Look at that. Wow, this is the biggest one I've found. What the 
heck was that? <gasps> Hello? 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 What the <coughs> shit? Ha, 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 ha.